uh, hit record here or press the record button. Um, my really, my number one goal for this semester was no Zoom meetings without a shower and my fancy teacher shirt. That's right. We all know how it goes this last year. <laughs> when you can literally still be in bed and go to class, is it? Wasn't that kind of without a pandemic, everybody's dream to begin with? Anyway, so, but now that we're here, um, I have a farm, a four acre farm. And so I got busy out there this morning. Uh, we have over a hundred chickens. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I was kind of attending to that. So excuse my casual Monday wear. Um, but uh, my name is Jason Downing and this class uh, is looking at social inequalities in health. I'm not sure how many folks are nurses or planning on going into the medical field, uh, but usually like a decent portion of people. Some people are involved in the social or social department, um, but I think it's really, really, really valuable that we don't just look at health purely from um, a medical point of view. Uh, so yes, this is a social sciences class and yes, um, just like I know that you all wear your masks, because why would anybody pay over $100,000 to get a degree in science, whether it's a social science or another science and not wear a mask. But also, I know that this semester with this class, we have to look at things with like a human element, right? There are so many factors that lead to the health statistics that we have now, and many of them are part of our social world. So yes, we will be using social science and statistics and data to look at just what that means. And if you are a person that works in healthcare, wow, I think this could really help, right? And if you're just a person that is into sociology and looking at these different groups of people, this is another class for you, I love SOCH. SOCH is like my favorite thing. I've been teaching for 15 years and that went by really, really fast. So um, I've taught at CU before. Uh, for the last several years, mostly, or I guess exclusively online. And now um, this is actually another reason that I might not be fully dressed today. I took both my boys to school today for the first day in like 11 months. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the home alone thing. Ah, I'm 47 and I'm home alone. I don't even know what to do. Maybe I should jump on the bed and eat some ice cream. That kind of sounds like a good idea. Anyway, um, my name is Jason Downing. I've been teaching social for a long time, like I said. Um, and before I sort of talk about the mechanisms of the class, if this was a calculus class, I wouldn't mention much about me, or you might not mention much about you. But I think whether you're writing a content assignment or whether we're doing this class, sort of an intro, it helps to have a frame of reference, a human frame of reference, because that's how we're looking at things this semester. So um, I live on a four acre farm just outside of Fort Collins. It's uh, technically Laporte, but I don't know, I'm 10 minutes from downtown Fort Collins, but it's really rural around here. So has anybody lived in like a rural place, Iowa, Nebraska, anybody, farming people? If you are, you know the steering wheel wave. You might even know the steering wheel wave if you're not, but that's where you keep your hand on the steering wheel and just give people kind of like the what's up. Every day, all day long. That's, I'm out in the country, even though I'm not that far from downtown Fort Collins. We have 110 chickens. We grow as much organic food as possible. Um, I live with two teenagers, two boys, Zion, who is 13, and Storm, who is 15. And although I have a farm and I've got kids named Storm and Zion, I guarantee you I'm not a hippie. I do take baths. That's right. Modern hippies taking baths, <laughs> growing organic food. Um, anyway, my partner is an, uh, an artist and she also works at Natural Grocers. I know they have one down in Boulder. So yeah, um, food, biodiversity. My specialties include uh, food, looking at agriculture, environmental sociology, race relations is like my primary sort of focus over the last 25 years. Um, and so when I got a chance to teach this class, uh, I absolutely jumped at it because this is a really, really, really cool course. And I am, yes, I am from Chicago. That's right. That's why it's a great Monday. Not because the Bears won anything. They suck, but because the Packers lost yesterday. So I digress with a little bit of cheers. Because whenever that happens, it's a good day. Did you know that actually Aaron Rodgers has one less Super Bowl ring than Jim McMahon the last time we won a Super Bowl in 1985? I think Jim McMahon even won one with the Packers towards the end of his career in a really weird twist of fate. Anyway. I digress. Um, 
So let me walk you through this course. I'm gonna do a little bit of a screen share. Um, and just remember that I think that the, the cool thing about this class is that I want it to be, or I wanna be as accessible for you as if you were right in a small, small classroom. I don't, I don't, I wanna be there anytime you need to Zoom meet. I wanna be there to reach out and help you with your writing. So yeah, you're paying a lot of money to take this class, but my promise to you is that I'll be an awesome resource for you. And in college, I'm gonna, now that I'm, look, I'm still in college, I'm 47. Ha <laughs> ha, yes, that's winning for me. But for you, while you're in college, the thing that you have to do is make as many solid contacts and relationships as possible. Your grades after college won't matter so much as the people you have met and networked with. So consider me um, a resource that's been around doing this thing for a little while. And I love SOCH and I love SOCH departments and I recommend them. I think um, the people in SOCH departments are the people that were marching for people when they were 20 and now they're 80 for people's rights or the people that are 20, right? Everybody is welcome. And in this classroom, I will say this, I don't, it's not an in-class person thing. So I don't, we won't have any problem with it whatsoever. But I always say this, my classes, it's important that I'm an ally. So no racism, nor discrimination, no loser bill like white supremacy business, none of that, because none of that has any place in education or in learning. And I, I really go hard against that because, I don't know, because it's subhuman behavior. So in my class, I expect that my students will not engage in that, not only on this platform, but throughout the course of the semester. I know that, and this is how I leave every class. I say, be good people and do good things. So I expect that from every single person in here, right? Be awesome students and treat the people around you with kindness, love, and compassion. And particularly this semester, we're gonna look at things, and here might be the most important term I will teach you all semester long, cultural pluralism, okay? The ability to see things from someone else's perspective. Look, not just so that you suddenly gonna take on that point of view, but we have to be able to see things from diverse perspectives because diversity makes our life better. And I'm not like, that's not like some kind of joke thing. The more diverse a river is, you take a couple of those components out, the river, the biodiversity, the river doesn't function as well. Our society is better and functions better for having multiple different perspectives from many different people, right? That gives us an advantage to try and understand those perspectives. So that's why we're going to look at things, um, I think, with... Uh, you know, a lens or through lenses this semester that try and understand other people's perspectives and that are respectful, really. All right, let me do a screen share. Uh, and let's take a look right now. And my, uh, oops, just gonna drop this down back up here. Okay, nod your head if you can see that just so I get a little bit of feedback. Okay, great. I don't wanna be screen sharing nothing and have people just be like, I'm just gonna let him talk. All right, so home, um, your textbook is required, okay? Yeah, you can get on the internet, search out these questions and Google answers, but the solid, like how, how our sources are solid or not, whether they are good peer-reviewed sources, that just doesn't come from Googling on page one, you know? It comes from using your library resources, using Google Scholar, and working with sources that I know are solid. So this book, you can find online, it's downloadable, it doesn't cost that much. Yes, it's been around for a while. They're gonna update it, like recently they said, or soon, but this is a used version of a textbook that applies directly. And there's not that many textbooks that apply directly to what we're talking about. So I have all sorts of like different readings available for you in the syllabus and, and resources, cause I want you to have, and PowerPoints and stuff, I want you to have as many resources as possible. This is a good starting place for a textbook. When you write your content assignments, your weekly assignments, you'll need to use that, okay? All right, so announcements is where you can find everything. I know you know that, but here, our extra credit food drive, talk about that more later. The syllabus, um, a welcome chapter content rubric, Zoom meeting, and a little bit of a kind of how to, I have the college game, a few words on winning. I don't know, it's in the last couple of years, I put quotes around everything now that we're in the twilight zone. So anyway, you can read those please and check them out but I am happy you're here. And rather than follow, like download the syllabus, good information, important contacts and links on it, stuff about grading, but the schedule, I have it in there. Don't follow that schedule because all you have to do here is either go to assignments, 
and see absolutely everything laid out by date or click on the syllabus and there it is, right? So if you're looking at the syllabus, you're like, oh, that doesn't have a specific date on it. Don't worry about it because everything on Canvas, that's when it's due, right? Okay, so chapter, and it might look a little bit different through mine, but chapter one content assignment, that is coming up Friday, okay? So when I click on it, they should be detailed, contain text information. These are essay questions, okay? You've got four essay questions. You cross-index it with a book. You answer it. Doesn't matter third person, first person. This is Soch. I also want you to add your own insights. If this is calculus, what's that matter? If you've had an experience before, I don't teach where I just regurgitate towards you. And this is like Teacherville and that's Studentopolis. And I'm an academic guy and I've got so many degrees. I do, but that doesn't help you learn any, right? So I want you to be able to talk to me and use me as a resource, like I said, but APA or MLA, however you are most suited or what you know the most about as far as citations in text and, you know, a paragraph per one, right? You know, I don't want you to write a book on each one of these, but they're detailed essay questions. So write detailed responses. I think I even have a break between the first week due and then next week there's no content assignments due so that I can read these, grade these, and all semester long we'll be working on improving your writing. Does that sound good? Now, although these are only worth 10 points now, both exams are essay exams. So if you click to quizzes, they're not, you see them when they're open and when they close. You can take these weekly content assignments and apply them to questions in the exam and then add more to them, okay? So the advantage of keeping up with the weekly assignments is that you're building uh, essay responses that you can then put into your exam so you can do really well on those exams, okay? So there's two essay exams. They're each open for 10 or 12 days apiece, and they cover like the first five chapters we're going to be doing. The next one covers the next five, okay? Discussions. Um, Social observation due February 1st. Now, unlike the other discussions, you don't have to post a week ahead of time or whatever, but next, this is due like next Tuesday, maybe. I want you to walk outside or look outside or observe people someplace. Now, yeah, I know it's COVID. You can go on your computer and watch a live stream of people gardening or roller skating probably, but this is to get us thinking in terms of sociologists, right? We need to cultivate our tools and our tools are observation. And then we don't just guess, I'm going to give a you and we're going to talk about sociological tools, right, that will help you uh, understand the things that we're studying. So most of them, however, like number one, discussion number one, sick around the world, uh, PBS frontline film, you watch it, then discuss it. How do you feel about healthcare in the United States compared to the rest of the world? How can we improve? What inequalities exist? Use personal examples, examples from the text or the film, okay? So this one happens to be free. Some of the links, um, most of them are free. If it's something really good and, you have, and it's on Amazon, I might not be able to do anything about that. But for now, I have two things. And this is the one thing that kind of like people have a question about. It says due February 11th, but I've got first post due by February 4th. So if we go over to the discussion board again and look at what I expect from discussions, wow, there's a lot, but here's the basic. You have to make your first post a week before the deadline. So I show you that date as well. If I don't, and you may know this already, but it is guaranteed that 99% of all of the posts will come on the last day. And that's like internet barfing. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but it's just like all at once, blah. Nobody discusses with each other at that point. So to get a discussion going back and forth, a reciprocal discussion, at least three posts, your first one a week in advance, and two more on two different days, you can do more than that, okay? But I'm just doing a heads up for people so that you understand that if I don't require that to be done ahead of time, then it won't be. And I do want these discussions to be substantive, not just another way to grab some points. Now, lastly, if we look at the discussion board, this is one of my favorite things here. Extra credit food donations due by April 28th. Now, I've been teaching for 15 years and I always do a food drive. This last semester, we raised $9,000, which provides 18,000 meals for people. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Even at CU, where you've got million dollar classrooms or at CSU, million dollar classrooms, you can only do so much sociology inside four walls. So one of the ways that we're gonna do sociology this semester is to donate to people in need. 
Now, last semester I had it up here at the uh, Lambert County Food Bank, but I wanted something closer to you in Boulder. Um, I know that not all of you are in Boulder, but at least associated more closely with CU. So if we pop onto this link right here, bring it up. Oh yeah, Downing, so Downing Sociology Food Drive. That's right. Now, you heard me correctly, $9,000 over 18,000 meals we provided last semester. I want to do better this semester. So if you donate at least $5, and then you'll have to make a post on the discussion board, look at that, okay, and write about it, then that's 25 points of extra credit. That's a decent amount of extra credit. Normally, people like aren't looking for that necessarily until like after the first exam or something like that. Um, but it's a way for you to reach out and, and, and impact your community, right? Now, uh, you can share this link with friends and family too. Somebody's grandma last semester gave $1,500, lifted up people's like uh, grades from three different schools and fed people in the community. So to me, I think this is an awesome opportunity, but Jason, I don't have $5, I'm a poor college student. Isn't that like paying for extra credit? Nope, it's not. If you wanna write a two page paper, on homelessness and poverty in Northern Colorado. If you look on that same discussion board thing, you can do that, okay? So there's an alternate extra credit thing if you can't come up with the five bucks to donate or however much you wanna donate. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, I'm only seeing three people. If you are able to unblock your cameras, please do. Um, I know I ran through that pretty fast, um, but whether or not you're a senior taking this, a freshman taking this, um, whatever your experience is, whether you're at home in your parents' basement, whether you're actually at school taking some classes in person. Um, I don't even have to say that thing that all teachers said, we're experiencing a time like none other. I don't know, right? It's broken recordville at this point. We know what we're doing, all right? We know to mask up. We know how to be safe. Um, I would say, you know, we have a plan moving forward, which is important when we're living life within, uh, these global sort of constraints or realities, however you want to talk about it. But my job here is to help you out. Um, yeah, I'm very interested in retention. That's why we work on things and we do things and we don't, I don't have you write about something and then regurgitate it right away or ABCD. We learn it, we read about it, you write about it, you write about it on the exam by that time, because I think this is important information. If you're telling me that a woman of color who's a single mom lives 10 years less, when I could tell you all right now, how would you like one more day? If you knew tomorrow was your last day, would you take one more day? You bet you would. You'd take 20 hours, you'd take five years. If you had health statistics, which led for you to die 10 years earlier than most people, just based on some factors, we wanna know why. Because sociologists study that so that we can do something about it. It's not just that we know how many people teenage pregnancy rate. Oh, that's interesting. No, it's so that we can do something about it. We don't study policing um, so that we're just like, oh, well, that's how many people are shot when pulled over and they look like that. that. No, we do it to improve upon what we have and make a difference. That's what sociology is all about. So I think that what we're studying this semester isn't like life important. It's how long you live um, at all. So to me, paramount that we sort of understand what's going on here with all these social factors that lead to different health outcomes. Um, okay, quickly, I'll take a pause. That's a lot of talking for me. I'll turn to the side, turn myself into a Kermit the Frog meme. Mm -hmm. Turning back to you now. All right, questions for me. Questions for me about the family, what I do, um, my class, my teaching, my farm, this class, specifically how discussions work, exams, content. I'm not good at being quiet, but I'll be quiet for a second. Please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I joined a little late, so I may have missed this, but um, is there a way that you recommend getting the book for the class, like ordering it off of Amazon or the bookstore or what do you recommend? Right, um, yes. <laughs> I know that's not a yes or no question. Um, we had it because it's older. I think that um, last semester I taught this class. I do believe the bookstore should have it. It should be used. Um, I found a copy online that I could download in five minutes. When I found out I was going to teach this class last semester and I looked around for texts, I just wanted to look at it. And I picked it up for so cheap. It was worth having, having for me anyway. So I think that, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. 
if this happens to people, remember, I'm like your ally here. I want, my job is to make, look, a lot of times teachers take things that are hard enough to understand and kind of make it even harder. That's not my job. My job is to take concepts and make it easier for people to understand or make it easier for you to succeed or retain. So if you get this book on Thursday and you cannot finish this content assignment by this weekend, just reach out to me. Because the most important thing that anybody can do in this class the entire semester is stay in contact. Why? Because life is going to happen. Somebody is going to be shredding some gnarly pow pow, bro. No, I know, I know, I know. Here's my job also with two teenage sons in the house is to purposefully misuse phrases in pop culture. Anyway, <laughs> oh, that's that, I kind of pride myself on that. Anyway, somebody's going to break up with a boyfriend or girlfriend, and it's going to be the end of your life. <laughs> and then four <laughs> weeks later, you're going to be like, whoo, whoo, dodged that one. That was going nowhere. <laughs> um, the point is, life happens. So I'm not going to give you one of these, you know, academic over my glasses kind of looks. I'm just going to be like, where were you? Let's do this. So if something happens and you drop away for a week or you can't turn something in, stay in contact. It doesn't do me any good or your education any good for me to sit back here and be heavy handed. That being said, there are deadlines. Okay. There are deadlines. And, and I know in the world of COVID, it's like uh, another extension or I've got this going on or what, look, we also got to finish and start things at certain times. Um, and that's just the reality of the semester too. So people will earn A's and I, and I, oh, people will earn F's. And it used to make me feel really guilty because I love my students, but I've been teaching for 15 years now. So I will do what I can to help you earn an A and it's up to you, <laughs> right? So stay in contact. And um, I hope that that's like a long winded answering of your question. All right, other questions that you may have. Uh, we have 110 chickens, we sell eggs uh, at our farm stand. We always sell out, so this is not me trying to sell you on our eggs. Um, but uh, yeah, we sell plant starters, um, eggs. My partner's an artist, uh, so she sells her own art, has her own website, juliedowningart.com. And I've been playing in a band for 15 years here in Colorado, the same band, and also for, since I was 15. Um, so we kind of turned the farm last summer because I wasn't playing any shows for the first time ever. We turned it into a, a mini music venue where we did small socially distant shows for people where people would mask up and come in and, and, you know, I mean, I don't know how many people here love live music, but it's, it's been tough this last year to go out and see concerts and do that kind of thing. So yeah, we just sort of have a, a place here that's about a lot of different things. So, yep. Any other questions for me, the class, anything? Be happy to answer any questions you might have. Yeah, I got a question. Can yep. you hear me? Yep. Um, are we meeting about this time three days a week or? We're not actually. Um, okay. Sorry. Uh, we, I'm excited about doing this thing, but we're not going to meet that often, right? Like maybe I'll pull out a discussion that I want for us to talk about just, just so that we can do a little bit of face-to-face -face. because this is strictly online through Department of Continuing Ed. There's not really an expectation, you know, of that, but I'm a sociologist. I think there will be more people who succeed in this class if I'm more available to you, you know? So every once in a while, I'll try and announce it ahead of time. Say, hey, we're gonna actually do a live discussion of this thing. Maybe like the discussion board post or something like that, or, um, or I'm gonna do a Q and A about a particular chapter, um, something like that. So yeah, not, not very often, but again, I think there's value to folks not completely feeling like there's no, point of contact or person, you know, like it's just the matrix and I'm a running this class. <laughs> like you don't even know, is it a real teacher? Oh, I'm just picturing those matrixy things come like running down the screen or whatever. Um, so yeah, anyway. All right, other questions. Yep, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. If I were to reach within just like right on my desk, I've got so many toys, it's ridiculous. Um, my mom never made me throw out my toys. She made me keep them all because she thought they might be worth something. Good call, mom. Good call. And uh, now I've given a lot of them to both of my boys. Uh, you should see our Lego land. Whew. It's it's impressive. Maybe sometime this, uh, this semester, I'll show you some chickens, uh, something on the farm, um, whatever. I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll, uh, I'll at least try and be here once in a while for everybody. All right, any other questions about how things are running? I think First thing out of the gate 
would be for you to read chapter one, okay? And then answer those content questions. Remember, they're college level essays. They have to have in-text citations. Whether you choose that as MLA or APA is fine with me. I don't have a word count. Write an essay that covers the question. Then when you get feedback for this first one, you'll know a little bit more, okay? Um, remember, and don't forget this, there are lonely English majors sitting in basements somewhere that wanna help people with papers. There's a writing center, okay? So if you're like doing the big paper or if you're trying to do some of these like smaller things that are essays, look, Remember, I'm here to help you write. There's people at the college that you are actually paying money to help write. They can, they're, they're part of the resources that you have available. So try and keep that in mind. Um, I don't know. There's Boba Fett, the Boston Terrier, asleep on her bed back there. Yep, I've got three dogs out here. Uh, Alma is a uh, pit bull. She's my snuggle muscle. I love her. She's the mellowest dog I've ever had. That little Boston Terrier, little dogs. I've never had a little dog before. A little dog is crazy, but she's a lot of fun. And then I've got a Catahoula. Does anybody know what a Catahoula is? I didn't think so. They're the Louisiana state dog and they're like called leopard dogs. They can climb trees. Go to YouTube, type in Catahoula tree climbing dog. You'll see some really interesting stuff, but they were uh, pushed up and over by Katrina. So these dogs were almost exclusively in the South. Um, and then now he makes it, where is he? Is he there? there he is. What's up, buddy? He's just sitting in that chair, just chilling. Um, but uh, it's interesting to me, like even, even dogs and like where they wind up sociology, you know, right? So I think that we can look at anything this semester through a sociological lens. Uh, any questions? Any last questions? All right, I'm going to record. Oh, I'm going to record this. You'll find the link uh, under announcements and modules. That being said, I have a YouTube channel. If you wanna subscribe, you can, because every time I put out a new video, you might get a notification. That being said, I'm not trying to, well, I'm not necessarily trying to be the, the Mark Rober of sociology, but my teenagers have told me, dad, you should quit teaching college and do that YouTube channel thing because that's what their generation thinks is a real job. And as it turns out, it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, check out that channel or don't. If you want to watch some lectures or you're into it, um, anyway, you're welcome to, but that's where I'll be posting them. And of course, in our class, look for them under announcements or modules, because that's where I have a lot of PowerPoints in modules goes chapter by chapter. There's a lot of PowerPoints there. They don't always sync up with every chapter, but I think there's a lot of good information in them. Um, and the syllabus has a lot of external. If you're looking for extra articles and links and peer reviewed journals on, on social disparities of health and the sociology of looking at these things. I've got it, I've got it built into the class. Any other questions? No, all right. I don't even know what I'm gonna do since like I said, this is the first day I've been alone in 11 months. I might just uh, go play Legos by myself. Yes, might even take a nap. Like I said, don't underestimate the power of the nap. It's important for you and your success in this life, okay? Uh, be good people and do good things. No, any more last questions? Bueller. All right, good. Be good people and do good things. Go out there in that world. Uh, and if you have any questions throughout the course of the semester, um, do not hesitate. If you want a Zoom meeting um, or if like you, you take the first exam or the first paper and it doesn't go well for you and you want to talk about it, don't stress. Um, we have a lot of the semester to go and I never build my classes so that you don't succeed at one thing and then you can't attain an A. That, that's why would somebody do that? That sounds ridiculous. I'm here to be a resource for you. Peace. Be good people. Talk to you later. Thank you. Yep. Take care. Thank you. Reach out if you need anything.